Hello, welcome to our film series on how to use 3D printing to bring STEM into the classroom. In these videos, you'll see how educators can use 3D printing exercises to introduce students to STEM careers and technologies. For this exercise, we'll be using the Flash Forge Adventurer 3 printer. The Adventurer 3 is a very nice, affordable 3D printer with a good collection of features for its price. For the STEM exercise, we'll be using one of our Learning Blade 3D Maker Quest lessons. In this lesson, we'll 3D print a model car that students will use to test how changing the car's mass will affect the car's performance. For this exercise, you'll need a 3D printer and its compatible filament, along with a long board to make a simple ramp, a stopwatch or smartphone timer app, a scale to measure mass, and some weights to place in the car. Let's get started. First, you'll need to unpack and set up your 3D printer. Setting up most 3D printers is a straightforward process. Just follow the startup instructions that come with your printer. If you'd like more information, you can find detailed demonstrations of how to set up and load the FlashForge Adventurer 3 printer at the end of this video. To download the 3D lesson files, we'll go online and visit Thingiverse.com. Thingiverse is a website that hosts a massive collection of 3D models and related exercises. To find today's lesson, go to Thingiverse.com and search for Learning Blade in the main search bar. This will show you all of our Learning Blade 3D Maker Quest lessons. Today's lesson is Concept Car Prototyping. In Thingiverse, you can choose to download all of the lesson files or individual model files within a collection. For our lesson, we'll click the Download All Files button and select a location on our hard drive to save them. Thingiverse packages everything in a zip file, so once it's downloaded, you'll need to right-click on the zip file and extract all of the files. Now you have all the 3D files needed for this exercise. Once your 3D printer is set up and you have the 3D object files, you can begin 3D printing. Most 3D printers can be controlled by different software applications. For this lesson, we'll demonstrate the flash print software that's designed for the Adventurer 3 printer. If you would like to watch a demonstration of downloading and installing flash print, skip to the detail sections at the end of this video. To print the 3D objects, launch flash print and click the load button at the top of the screen. Select the 3D model files from where they're saved on your hard drive. Flash Print may ask if you'd like the object centered on the print platform. Click Yes. When you can see your model files inside the printer's print area, you are ready to continue. 3D objects with large overhanging sections will need supports to help each layer of the object print properly. The objects we're printing today don't require supports, but other objects you print might. To add supports, you would click on the Supports button at the top of the screen. In the Support view, you can have Flash Print automatically generate supports where they're needed. Click the Print button at the top of the screen. Flash Print allows you to print objects by using either custom or predetermined settings. For this lesson, we're going to use the standard setting. Make sure to change the material type to match the filament type for your machine. This model does not require supports, so we'll make sure supports are disabled. For this object, we will use a raft, so we'll make sure the raft option is enabled. A raft is a base layer of plastic that's printed onto the platform below the 3D object. The raft helps the object stay in place on the print platform as the filament cools. Once you've chosen the 3D printer settings, click OK. Flash Print will ask you to save the project file, and then it will show you a preview of the printed object. You can move the Preview Layer slider bar up and down to see any layer of the print job. Once you're satisfied that the print job looks like what you want, click the Send G-Code button. This will send the printing commands, a type of instructions called G-Code, to the printer. Once the printer has all of the commands, it will begin printing. Flash Print estimates the amount of time a print job will take and displays that estimate in the upper right corner. Different settings will produce different print times, so with experience, you should get a good feel for how long printing objects will take at different settings. Here, you can see a time-lapse example of how the 3D printing process works. The printer will print the objects layer by layer until the print job is done. Once it finishes, the printer will slide the print bed to the front of the machine and begin cooling down. 
It's a good idea to wait a few minutes after printing to make sure the print bed isn't too hot. You remove the print bed plate by squeezing the release tab at the front of the bed and sliding out the plate. The 3D object will be attached to the raft, but both the raft and the objects can be removed by flexing the print bed plate. You may need to remove smaller pieces from the raft with pliers or a flat spreader. With this lesson, the car wheels are designed to snap into place at the end of each axle. Once in place, the wheels may spin a little roughly. You can spin them back and forth to get them loosened up. You'll want to make sure the wheels spin as freely as possible for the lesson experiments. The lesson files on Thingiverse also include a PDF of instructions on running the car prototype experiments and the worksheets to record and graph the results. Set up a board as a ramp, placing one end of the board on the floor or table with several books under one end of the board. For the experiment, create a ramp that's at least four inches high. Make a mark at the top of the ramp with either a pencil or a piece of tape where the car will start each test. Make another mark at the end of the ramp. When the car reaches this point in each test, the timer will be stopped. Each test in the experiment will work the same way. We'll change the mass of the car for each test, but the way we'll measure the car's performance will remain the same each time. We'll also run each test three times, record those times, and calculate the average time. This helps us account for slight differences we might accidentally make in how we measure the car's performance. For test 1, measure the mass of the assembled car and record it on the worksheet. Place the car at the top of the ramp at the start point. Release the car and start the timer at the same time. When the car reaches the mark at the end of the ramp, stop the timer. Record the time on the worksheet. Repeat the test two more times, record each time on the worksheet, and then calculate the average time for test 1 on the worksheet. For test 2, add mass to the car. Place the weights in the car so that it significantly increases the mass of the car. Measure the mass of the car and record it on the worksheet. Place the car at the top of the ramp and time how long it takes to roll down the ramp, just as in test 1. Perform test 2 three times, record each time on the worksheet, and then calculate the average time for test 2 on the worksheet. Now graph the car's mass and average times from tests 1 and 2 on the worksheet in the blank graph section provided. These two points on the graph represent the car's performance with its largest and smallest amounts of mass. For test 3, remove some but not all of the weights from the car and measure the mass of the car. Record the car's mass on the worksheet. Draw a line between the points on the graph for test 1 and test 2. Find the spot along the line that matches the car's current mass for test 3. Record the time that corresponds to the car's mass on the worksheet as the estimated time for test 3. Place the car at the top of the ramp and time how long it takes to roll down the ramp, just as in the earlier tests. Perform test 3 three times, record each time on the worksheet, and then calculate the average time for test 3 on the worksheet. Graph the car's mass and average time from test 3 on the worksheet's graph. Compare the estimated time for test 3 to the actual time for test 3. And that's how this lesson works. After performing these experiments, you can complete the lesson by using the discussion questions included in the 3D Maker Quest instructions. These questions are designed to get your students to consider important details in the experiment and how this lesson relates to real-world STEM careers and technologies. Educators can also expand this lesson by letting students design custom wheels for further prototype testing. The 3D model files in this lesson can be uploaded into your favorite CAD software, like Tinkercad. Tinkercad.com is a free website that allows students to work with 3D shapes and create complex new objects. To work with the files in this lesson, click the Import button in the upper right menu in Tinkercad. Tinkercad will ask you to choose the file to import, so select the wheelhubnotire.stl file that was included with the lesson files from Thingiverse. After you select the file, Tinkercad will allow you to modify the scale or dimensions of the file when it's imported. For this lesson, there's no need to change the sizes of the imported objects, so simply click Import and Tinkercad will add the imported file to your work plane. 
This new object is the wheel hub without any tire around it. This hub is already sized to fit on the car's axle, so it's important that you not change the dimensions of the wheel hub. But this hub needs a tire. To add a tire, you can scroll down the right-hand shapes menu and drag a new tube shape onto the work plane. You can make changes to the tube size by either dragging one of the control points on the shape or by entering them in the shape menu box on the right side of the screen. Once you have a tube size you like, hold down the shift key and left select both the imported wheel hub and the tube. Then click the align button at the top right of the screen. When you click the align button, you'll be shown various black dots at which points you can align the selected shapes. Click the middle points shown to align the two shapes along the center points in the two dimensions. Once you have the shapes aligned, click the group button to combine them into a single object. Now you have a new wheel that you can test out on the car prototype, but you'll need more than one wheel. To duplicate more wheels, select the wheel and press the Ctrl and C keys on your keyboard. This makes a copy of the wheel in your clipboard. Press the Ctrl and V keys to paste a new copy of the wheel onto the work plane. The new copy may appear inside of the original wheel. You can move the new wheel by clicking and dragging it around the work plane. You can make copies of multiple objects by shift selecting both objects and pressing Ctrl plus C and then Ctrl plus V. Make sure to drag the new wheel copies away from the originals. Now that we have the new wheels, we need to export the 3D model files. Shift select all four of the new wheels, then click the export button at the top right of the screen. This will pull up the export box with some exporting options. Most 3D printers will work with either OBJ or STL files. For this lesson, we prefer STL files, so click that button and select the location on your hard drive to save the files. These new wheel files can now be imported into the FlashPrint software and printed out, just like the original car prototype files. Now you know how easy it is to use the FlashForge's 3D printers to introduce students to STEM careers and technologies. For more examples of how educators can use 3D printing as a STEM teaching tool, check out some of our other lesson videos in this series. If you'd like to learn more about FlashForge's 3D printers, visit our website at flashforge-usa.com. For more information about Learning Blade and our STEM and computer science lessons, visit learningblade.com or email us at info at learningblade.com. Now, if you'd like to see how to set up your 3D printer, install FlashPrint, or work with 3D objects in Tinkercad, keep watching these informative step-by-step -step videos. Your 3D printer should have included a set of easy-to-follow setup instructions. After unpacking and removing the shipping materials from the printer, plug the included power supply cable into a wall outlet and power on the printer. Once the printer has powered on, select Filament, then Load on the touchscreen menu. The printer will begin heating up the print nozzle. Once the nozzle has heated up, the touchscreen will ask you to load the filament. Remove the filament door on the side of the printer. Make sure your filament has a smooth cut end that will easily fit into the intake opening. Take the spool of filament and insert the end of the filament into the intake opening marked by the yellow and black arrow. Once the filament has been inserted about an inch, the printer will automatically start reeling in the filament. Place the filament spool on the spindle, making sure the spool can unroll smoothly. Close the printer door. After about 30 seconds, the plastic filament will start pushing out of the printer nozzle. Once this occurs, press OK on the printer touchscreen menu. The printer filament is now loaded. Once your 3D printer is set up and loaded with filament, we advise you to connect the printer to your Wi-Fi network. This will make printing from the FlashPrint software much quicker and easier. You can connect the printer through the touchscreen menu on the front of the printer. Press Tools, then Network, then Wi-Fi. The printer will then scan for available Wi-Fi networks. Use the left and right arrow buttons to find your Wi-Fi network, then press the name of the network you want to use. This will take you to a screen where you can enter your Wi-Fi password. Once you've entered your password, press the check button at the top right of the screen and the printer will connect to the network. 
Once the printer is connected, a check mark will show to the right of the network name on the screen. You can now press the return arrow button at the bottom of the screen until you return to the main menu. The printer is now connected and ready to print. The printer comes with a copy of FlashPrint, but it's always best to go to the FlashForge website and download the latest version. Just go to FlashForge.com and roll over the Support option in the main menu. Select Download Center from the drop-down options. This will take you to the latest versions of the FlashForge software. Find the latest version of the FlashPrint software for your operating system and click the Download button for that version. You'll need to select a location to download the software zip file and once the software has downloaded, right-click on the zip file and extract all of the files. Double-click on the FlashPrint application to launch the FlashPrint setup. Once FlashPrint has finished installing, select the Launch FlashPrint checkbox and click OK. When FlashPrint opens for the first time, it will ask you to select your printer. Choose Adventurer 3 from the menu and click OK. FlashPrint will open up, showing the blank 3D printing plane within the printer's print area. Before you can print, you'll need to connect FlashPrint to your 3D printer. If you've already connected your printer to your Wi-Fi network, you'll choose Print and Connect Machine from the main menu. This shows a pop-up window with the printer's IP address. To find out your printer's current IP address, go to the printer and select Tools, then About from the printer's touchscreen menu. In the About section, press the right arrow button two times to see the printer's current IP address for the Wi-Fi network. This is the number you'll need to enter into FlashPrint's Connect Machine pop-up window. Once you've entered the correct IP address, click the Connect button. After FlashPrint has connected to the 3D printer, the printer's status box will appear in the lower right corner of the software. Click Done to close the pop-up window. Now you are ready to print to your 3D printer. To use Tinkercad, you'll first create an account. Once you've created an account, you can get started by clicking the Create New Designs button. This takes you to a blank 3D work plane where you can drag and drop new 3D objects to make your creations. We recommend also dragging a ruler onto the work plane as well. The ruler will help you manipulate objects with better precision. The key to Tinkercad is how easily it allows you to add, modify, and group new shapes together to create complex objects. To get started, drag a new object from the right menu onto the 3D work plane. When you select an object by left-clicking, Tinkercad shows you the object's main parameters. And if you have a ruler on your work plane, it also shows you the measurements of each of the shape's dimensions. You can modify an object by either dragging one of the control points on a selected object, or by left-clicking on the measurement of that parameter and entering a new number. Tinkercad also has tools for grouping together multiple shapes into a new object. Press the Shift key and left-click the shapes you want to combine, and then click the Group button at the top right of the work plane. You can ungroup shapes by selecting the object and clicking the Ungroup button. A very powerful feature of Tinkercad is the ability to turn any shape or object into a whole, or negative version of the shape. This means that instead of adding to a shape, a whole or negative object will subtract from a shape once it's included in a group. You can see this in action by selecting a shape and clicking the Whole option in the upper right menu. Now, if you group this whole shape with another shape, the whole shape will be subtracted from the other shape, creating a complex new object. This is how all of our 3D Maker Quest objects were created and Tinkercad has many other exciting features students may wish to explore. You can import 3D models like STL files to use in your creations. You can change the color of objects. You can mirror an object in a specific direction. You can align objects to an edge or to the center of all the selected objects, and you can also rotate an object in any direction. By experimenting and playing around with Tinkercad, your students can explore the exciting world of creating 3D objects.